And whose team is this? Is this your team? Or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to the Dad Mode Podcast, common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, and Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine. I'm a father. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you and either their chiefy, so let's try and learn something together today. The website is Dad ModePod.com. Like us on Facebook.com slash Dad Mode Podcast. Also, Instagram, the Twitter machine. Follow me at Andy Carlson Show. So uh, we're coming back in. It, it's been a while. And I apologize for that. We've been on a pretty heavy recording schedule for Purple for the Win and, and Bull. Check those out. Uh, PurpleFGW.com, BullShow.co. Subscribe on iTunes. And uh, also now we're doing uh, daily video content. Apparently, it, it just kind of happened by accident. You know, just uh, on our Purple for the Win YouTube channel. So sh- subscribe to that as well. And it initially just started... During the draft, I was like, oh, this is a really easy way to crank out some high quality content. And then, um, yeah, just we're, we're we're starting to get pretty comfortable behind the camera. And um, basically what I do is I write down three words and then just wing it on like a five minute video. It's That's how we usually do those anyways. And um, who knows? Uh, heck, maybe we'll migrate uh, dad mode to primarily video and then uh, we'll just push out the audio as a podcast as well. Uh, but wanted to touch base today. And I, I promise we'll, we'll start getting back into these uh, again. We won't do so many rebroadcasts. But the great thing is, a, a lot of the topics that we cover, it's going to be evergreen. You know, it, it's going to be applicable right when it came out, applicable nine months later, ap- applicable three years from now when you're on kid number two. And we just rebroadcast the the working on kid number two episode. Uh, that was from. Gosh, that was like from like five months ago. We did that two weeks ago, and we're we're still here. Yeah, we're still uh, attempting to try number two because it it, it when, when once you get older, <clears throat> and you know circumstances beyond our control, it, it's not like Teen Mom. <clears throat> it's not like a you know the MTV show Teen Mom where it's like, oh my god, I I just had sex for the first time ever, and now I have eight children. Like oh my god, that, that's always so annoying, isn't it? And it's more annoying to older couples that have been trying to have kids for a number of years. And we were very blessed and lucky to have Muggsy. But, you know, the couples that have, you know, the 40 year old couples, maybe they focused a little bit on their career to start with, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then they try to have kids later. They find out they have complications. And, you know, they, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of money spent, and a lot of just uh, regret and sadness that they can't procreate on their own. And, you know, they look into adoption. I almost said have to look into adoption, but as a child of adoption, I can say that there's a lot of massive benefits from it. And, oh, uh, one of our friends just adopted uh, a pair of sisters. Uh, I think they're like 15 and 10 or something like that. And I, I know it's not exactly what people want when they're adopting they usually want a, a young kid that they can raise from birth but you know imagine the the effect on those two kids the 15 and 10 year old who now go from foster care where they may have gotten split up and they get great parents and yeah i mean they're life-changing for both of them it's amazing uh but where was i oh yeah the 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 16 year old and the 14 year old uh, 15 year olds uh, all in there you know having sex for the first time just experimenting and the condom breaks or something or they don't even use protection because they're idiots and then it's like oh oh look we have a baby the miracle of life god is um he's got a sense of humor kind of dig that about him yeah uh but today i wanted to talk about what mugsy digs and that's all right, so we've all had our blankie, right? And some of us had it longer than others, question mark. And I, I always remember, I think it was the Learning Channel. Yeah, remember when uh, TLC used to be the Learning Channel, not like Honey Boo Boo and crap like that? But it was, I forget what, maybe it was My Strange Addiction or whatever. But this girl, she was a uh, goyle, um, despicable me three coming out pretty soon. I'm pretty excited about that. But... 
she was like 22 and she was in college and just wrapping up there and they're they're covering her in during finals week and she was in the library doing work and she sucked her thumb yeah i mean it's a little off-putting but here's the kicker she had like this little like little scrap of fabric that she always had like in the crook between her thumb and the rest of her hand so that she could sniff it like and it was a piece of her childhood blankie and i know that when kids are young and in cribs you you get attached to your blankie it's a running gag and like linus from peanuts you know he always had his blank linus right yeah and a lot of us grow out of it some sooner than others like i remember i had a blankie but i didn't have an emotional attachment to it uh but some kids and for really no reason. It's not like there you can point to a specific, oh, there was a traumatic incident, so now they're attached to a blanket. Just psychologically are stuck to it, right? And the wife, we're like, we've moved probably like three or four times since we've been together. And her baby blanket, like, she doesn't sleep with it. She doesn't have it out prominently. It's in a storage bin. But she always makes sure it comes along. But And I'm probably, frankly, pretty lucky because I, I know that, Within the sound of my voice, there's some significant others out there whose baby blanket is very prominent. You know, it's very uh, right. Her, her, her. It, it, it is right uh, there. And maybe they sleep with it. Maybe it's weird being an adult, but go going back to this college girl. And so it obviously started off as a full blanket and then just disintegrated down to the point where it was the size of, I don't know, like a fabric swatch that you get from Joanne Fabrics, right? And... My whole thing is like the whole weird energy around it. I mean, her parents probably should have broke her of this at some point. And I don't know if that's tough love, just completely taken away, um, uh, bleach, <laughs> bleaching her thumb so she wouldn't suck it. I, I don't, seeing a psychologist, I, I don't know. But when, when you hear of a girl sucking her thumbs and right away, like the guy's mind goes to, oh, she has an oral fixation, so this must be great. But no, her, her teeth were pretty jacked up, you know, from always sucking her thumb. And, you know, the, the single dating life, from what I've gleaned since I haven't been single in like 10 years, uh, everyone has some damaged goods on them. And, like, maybe in the grand scheme of things, being a thumb sucker and having to have the scrap of your childhood blanket right in the crux of your thumb isn't all that weird, but it's still pretty weird. Like, um, the guy who has to date her has to really be committed, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And w- with Muggsy, to bring a full circle to her, there's... She doesn't really have a blankie she's attached to. Like, she has three or four that she goes through and, you know, doesn't have an emotional thing for. But she has an emotional attachment to a pair of fleece winter pants that the wife got. And they're, you know, they're adult pants, pajama pants. They're, like, pink with designs on them. I'll put a picture up as, like, the show post art. And it's, like, it, it, it annoys me. Mainly because uh, the wife kept letting her sleep with them because Muggsy would throw a fit every time we tried to take them away from her, and she she wears them like um you know like you would a sash like you would a scarf you know with the the crotch of the pants and the back of her neck and then like the the front legs dra- draping over in the front, and my whole paranoid concern is like she'll roll over in the middle of the night and one of the legs will get caught and then it'll choke her out and then we'll be those parents you know we'll be on the nightly news of um a a south metro couple uh child died due to asphyxiation because they choked to death because the one take away stupid pants yeah and it frustrated me to the point because I, i voiced my concern to the wife uh, probably about a half dozen times, maybe about like five, six, seven times that, Hey, we shouldn't let her sleep with these pants. And, and if we do not have a be around the neck and then it was like all nonchalant. Oh, but she loves them and da, 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 da. So here's what I did. Dun, 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 dun. I, I, I just took him. <laughs> I, I just took him away and, uh, I, I hid them in a undisclosed location. I, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to throw them away. 
if not burn them, I actually might just burn them. It, although it's not going to be burnt, good burning weather this weekend. Um, yeah, and here's the thing. I, I took one away about a week ago. I've been monitoring Muggsy. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No crying. Uh, like she can say words now. Like she can say pants. And no, like pants, 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 pants. And like nothing like that. Nothing. Nada. So the whole concern about you know rocking her emotional world by taking away these pants, which are probably easily a safety hazard, like a low level safety hazard for sure. It's not like we're uh, putting her in her bed with a with like a roll of razor wire or anything like that. It's not like that's her comfort blanket. Her uh, instead of a pair of pants is uh, razor wire. No, but yeah, absolutely nothing. And now I feel pretty confident in it. I'm I'm parenting. I, I'm doing it. I, I am doing it because even if it was just a blanket. I would be a little concerned, right? Because, you know, having the kid who's seven, eight, third and fourth grade and still has the blankie, I, I mean, kids and uh, teachers and parents are much more uh, uh, tuned in to what they perceive as bullying, probably way overboard now. They're like, even. You know, normal kid stuff is seen as bullying. Oh, that's bullying, that's bullying, that's bullying, that's bullying. But. I can't imagine the shit that an eight-year-old kid with a blankie would get. Like in middle school, rocking up to the lunch table, you know, got her lunch out, got her her little sandwich, got her carrot sticks, got her yogurt, uh, got her little Muggsy lunch, and then got her blanket. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to go over well. That's going to go over really well. And I, I do feel that the longer that the, the psychological attachment to the blankie goes on, the harder it will be to uh, you know break that stallion. You know, harder it will be to take it away, because you know right now, I, I think it was smart patting myself on the back to just take it away, cold turkey, be like be gone. Not like, oh well, you can have it three hours a day, and then we'll put it away, and then we'll uh, no no just gone. It's gonna be gone, and they're never coming back. And I'm barring the wife from wearing winter uh, fleece pajama pants as well. And I don't wear them anyways because I don't wear any pants to bed. Heyo. And yeah, they're gone. They are completely gone because yeah, as they get older, then you start developing your idiosyncrasies, and maybe you get into some OCD stuff. Maybe you get into things like that. And yeah, taking it away when she's seventeen months or how? 20 months, whatever, is going to be a lot tougher than, uh, it's going to be a lot easier, excuse me, than taking away when she's 20 years old. Yeah, that's my whole thoughts on that. And I'm being very vigilant about it. Uh, I think we, we got very lucky that Muggsy is not a thumb sucker. She's also not a, a, a uh, was it, pacifier? Yeah, she's not really into that. She never really was into that. And uh, uh, the blankie attachment, besides the pants, seems next to nil. So I'm pretty happy about that. And the... Yeah, I, I feel bad for the the parents who were into the binky because Muggs never really took to it. Like uh, when she, the newborns, what you're supposed to do is you know, put the pacifier in the mouth if they're crying, and then you're supposed to like flick it, you know, to make sure that they get suction on it, so they're able to hold it in their mouth or something like that. And <laughs> I don't know, like seeing the well, I, I guess she does do the thumb thing, like when she's in. When she meets new people, you know, what would be like low grade stressful situations, or if she's really tired, then the thumb will go in the mouth. But it's not a constant thing. You see kids run around constantly have the thumb in the mouth, and then it becomes a hygienic issue, and then it becomes a dental issue, and then it becomes a psychological issue, and that whole thing. And I'm pretty happy that we haven't uh, come across uh, that quite yet because. I understand the delicate position that parents are in, especially if uh, it makes a kid happy. They throw a tantrum. They throw a fit. If uh, you try to take the thumb out when they're six or seven, and then all of a sudden you just throw your hands up, you're like, all right, all right, just suck your thumb, little baby, do that. And then you you blink, and then they're at like a 25 junior CPA. And then you know, they're going over the Reynolds account, and there's like, well, if you look at the third quarter, you, you'll see that the gross profit from our account. McWilliams, are you done? Oh, oh, sorry. I, 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 I suck my thumb while I'm talking. You're fired. Except then it'll be a hate crime to fire the the guy or gal who sucks their thumb. Oh, 
It's amazing. Life is amazing. So that's the that's the story of the pants and how I broke the stallion. I literally just took him away. Put him in the sock drawer. I mean, put him in an undisclosed location. And I'm going to have a ceremony. Uh, like when a beloved sports figure leaves town. Yeah, I'm just going to burn the pants out in the yard. It's going to be amazing. Uh, also amazing, subscribe to the show. Tell a friend. Spread the word in your mommy and daddy groups. And subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and AHA Radio. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, all at Andy Carlson Show. And the website is dadmopod.com. But until next time, be a man, be a father, go dad mode. Love you a long time. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man. Be a father. Go dad mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.